But immediately you take a little detour, you go to work for uh, Delson and Gordon, and yeah. you're doing international law. And you describe yourself in this as an ersatz white man. <laughs> What's that? I don't know. I wore suits and, and uh, ties. I even bought a hat once, mm -hmm. just one, um, in my whole lifetime. Um, and, you know, I had a briefcase, and I just was a fellow with a briefcase and a suit, and uh, just like the white boys, except I had brown skin. Mm. But I still did stuff. I, even then, I, I worked on, uh, uh, I worked on problems of emerging countries. We, uh, we represented uh, Ghana. We did some work for, uh, um, some of the emerging politicians in Nigeria. Uh, we did some work for India, Burma, and uh, in, a lot of work for Indonesia. So mm -hmm. it was new countries. It was, the, it was the brown and the black countries that were emerging into the world stage at the and time. And did you feel any conflict, may not be the right word, but tension between this concern you had for people overseas and what was not happening here Oh yeah, within the United States. Oh yeah, and 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 now the movement in the South was really um, beginning to uh, occupy a larger and larger portion of my psyche, and uh, I think that that's part of why um, I began to feel that uh, law practice in any form was uh, was uh, just not. Uh, not relevant. You know, I heard you say something like that uh, at the public forum where you spoke. And yeah, in response as, to a question by a brilliant lawyer. Uh, uh, it struck me as odd in a way because you have this Thurgood Marshall example. He's a lawyer. Yeah. And he's winning these victories because he's a lawyer. The law is a tool that can be used. And I'm surprised that you sort of rejected it. That I rejected working for Thurgood? No, that you rejected the law as a tool. Um, Well, in part, it had nothing to do with race. I just didn't like the law. Oh. Um, I could do it, but it was it just tricks. Mm. I mean, it's it, there's nothing there's nothing mysterious about the law. Um, if I were a lawyer now, I'd be and just go on the commercial route. I'd be very rich. I mean, first of all, you have to be able to stand up and talk. Mm. Secondly, you have to remember what the person said. Mm. Thirdly, you need to be able to read statutes and understand them. Fourthly, you need to be able to manipulate this and that and the other thing to make meaning what you wanted to say instead of the plain reading of that. Well, that's just all tricks. Mm -hmm. And I didn't enjoy the tricks. And besides, um, the overall problem of, of doing law is that somebody pays you to think about what they want you to think about. And I figured out very early on the large part of your life is thinking. And I wanted that part of my life to be thinking about what I wanted to think mm -hmm. about and not what somebody else was paying but, me But to you think have about. this Thurgood Marshall example. Somebody's paying him. Yeah, but I'm not going to him. do, I'm not going to go to work mm -hmm. for Thurgood. Well, I, and there was no alternative. No, no. No complimentary alternative to the NAACP. Legal Except the Justice Department. Yeah. But Bobby Kennedy was not hiring black lawyers mm -hmm. to work on civil rights issues. So, again, I went into an international setting where I was dealing with Africa and. Uh, go to AID. I go to AID and yeah. I did, and uh, one of uh, I did I had Africa and Asia so mm -hmm. I still had the same interests that I had mm -hmm. had in my law firm except now I am really dealing with it in a more profound way because I'm dealing with problems of development rather than their legal problems at the UN. So